I just believe in Lee Brillo, you know, and and, uh, and and we were the hot new thing in town. And and I can remember one evening, uh, we tra we're travelling home down the A13 from London back to Canby Island, which and uh, right near Barking, there's a, there's a flyover you had to go over. And I remember uh, that evening, we'd been, well, whatever gig we'd been, there'd been some heavyweights from the music business had been in the gig and come and talk to us afterwards, right? And obvious things were happening. And then we're coming up to the top of the, of, of the flyover, and you see, and you see all the lights of Essex out there, you know, dagging them, and, and, and it all spread out, all these, light, all these lights. And I remember going, I wonder what's going to happen. Just as we went up, and I'll tell you what, that's probably the best moment of it all. <laughs> you know. Um, I like that that moment was quite transcendent, actually, and and uh, I don't suppose it ever does happen, does it? You know, but yeah, I remember, I remember that moment. It it was pretty good. We had our success, and uh, and then we, we we started getting on each other's nerves. <laughs> I do not know why. <laughs> uh, me and Lee, right? Um, we couldn't we couldn't be in the same room together. I think it was kind of happening when we were touring America in 1976. They were getting very heavily into drinking, and I was absolutely teetotal. And there was there was a there was a source of friction. Let me said to me, he said he wasn't surprised about the about the feel good break up. He's going, Cause you can't have three drunks and a speed freak. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose he was right. <laughs> anyway, we we yeah we got we got very fed up with each other, and it all it all exploded during the recording of our fourth album. Um, I, I then proceeded to do absolutely everything wrong, uh, wrong people, er, er, when I think back and it, what an idiot, but I mean, I chose it, you know, and so my career kind of went that way, uh, <laughs> which was where it was when, in, in, oh, that was still in the 70s, I think, yeah, <laughs> I bumped into Ian Jury, and uh, I knew Ian from back from the when he had Kilburn and the High Roads and that. And uh, he, I, I'd said to Ian, I was, I was feeling a bit fed up, right? And he asked me if I would, would I like to go and uh, make a single with the Blockheads back of me? Now, as it happens, I was just absolutely, uh, my favorite bass player in all the world was Norman Watroy, who I, who I didn't know personally at the time, but I thought, bloody hell, yeah, I'll get a, a, anything to play with him. And I went along and then they quickly asked me to join the Blockheads. And I, I think I had, uh, the two, of the two of the best years I had in rock and roll, actually, with, with the Blockheads. Although, Ian, I mean, Ian, I think Ian was a genius, probably, you know. <laughs> and I, and I, I did uh, feel for him a lot, but I'll tell you what, he's, he's one of the most offensive people, <laughs> really. I mean, he, he, he had the, I think he, I had this thing, he couldn't believe people loved him, you know, and so he would be really, really offensive to people, and I don't know, like, you know. But, uh, I mean, for instance, <laughs> we were in Copenhagen, we were doing a big rock festival, right? And, and um, uh, it's the night before. This, this is quite a posh hotel we're in, and it's full of bands from America and all over the place. And, uh, and so I get this phone call to my room, right? And it's, uh, it's Jenny Cotton, the uh, Blockhead uh, tour manager, saying, Wilco, Wilco, you've got to come down to the bar. Ian's causing terrible trouble. They used to get me, because, because I didn't go so far back, as the others in the band, I didn't have so much baggage, sort of thing, so I could be, a little, you know, a bit sort of. I think Ian had a little bit of respect for me or whatever. Anyway, he used to call me when he used to get out of van. Anyway, I get down into the bar, and there's Ian, and he's up against all this this yank, right? And and uh, I can see, I can tell by his body language what he's doing, right? And 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 this, I get as I get out there, two Americans saying to him, "Listen, man, I really used to admire you. I thought you were great, but now listen to you now. I realise you're just an asshole. And if you say one more word, I'm going to hit you." <laughs> and uh, at that point, I kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and I get up against you. I'm just terribly sorry, mate. I'm really, really, I'm just so sorry. He's had too much to drink, and he got a bit of a problem, you know. Anyway, I smooth things over with the septic, and then I look around, and there's, uh, there's Ian. He's sitting at the bar, right? And he's, 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 he's uh, shouting and what have you, right? And we said, we've got. I think Norman was there, and I think maybe Raymond is minder. I don't know. There were three. There were three of us at least. And, and we go up to Ian and go, come on, man, you know, let's go back to your room, come on, because, you know, you <laughs> and he didn't want to go, so we go, come on. And we got hold of him, right, we pulled him off this bar stool. Now, this bar is one of these bars with a...
brass rail around it. And he's got hold of this brass rail. And we're pulling him. And he's, he's shouting all that. I say, it's a posh hotel. He's shouting and we go, help me! Help me! And we pull him off the brass rail and we get him through uh, to, to the lift. And he's still shouting the people in the fire. And he's going, help me! Help me! And we, we pull this cripple into a lift. <laughs> and uh, anyway, we gave him, then we gave him up to his room. We gave him to his room, we lobbed him on the bed, and then we, we took his caliper, his leg iron, off of him, because he cannot stand up without the leg iron, you see. So we took this leg iron off of him and kind of just left him there. And he was like, but you could hear him for hours afterwards, lying on his bed, going, you bastards, you're all fucking sacked. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't.